Welcome to an episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how to write a driver for an iSCRC device on systems without device tree support. The functionality I will use today I've already included in an earlier video I did about how to write a driver for an iSCRC device which is parsed by the device tree. But in this video I didn't explain how this functionality worked or I didn't demonstrate it to you, so I thought, okay, let's do a separate video about this. So here I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH. And as you can see here on my webcam, I've connected an iSCRC device head lying around to my Raspberry Pi. And this is the BMP to AD temperature sensor. But today I want to write a whole driver which will read out the temperature. The focus today is only on the probing and on the loading mechanism. Okay, so you can already see I'm in my Linux driver tutorials folder and here you can see all the various drivers I've already implemented. And the first thing I will do now is I will create a new folder, 36 um, I2C driver and let me navigate into it. Then I will need a make file, I will recycle from my simple Linux kernel module and I will put it in here and let's edit it. So I will name my source file my I2C driver so here i have to add to set this object module variable to my iscrc driver .o. okay now let's create the source file and first i need to include some headers so i need to include linux slash module dot h and i will need two more headers linux init dot h and linux iscrc dot h then I will set the module license to GPL. The other module informations I will add later. So this I will do offline. Okay, and now if you want to write a driver for a device on Linux, you normally always have to follow the same steps. First, you have to name all the compatible devices. Then you have to implement probe and remove function. Then you have to implement the driver struct and then you have to register your, your new driver. So let's do this step by step. So I need a new struct from the type iSCRC device ID and I will call it my IDs. And this is an array and this array contains all the compatible devices. So the compatible devices need a name. I will name the first one a device. And the second argument here is optional driver data. So let me add a second B device. And you have to terminate this list with an empty element so the kernel knows, okay, now I have reached the end of the list. The next step is I have to make this device table entries known to the system and I can do so with module device tables. My subsystem is I2C and then I will add my IDs to it, to the device table list. Okay, I told you the first argument here is a name. The second one is, is a pointer to optional data. So let's add some optional data. So I will create a new struct. I will call um, my data and this should have a string. I will call name with 32 bytes and an integer i. And now I will create two um, yeah, variables from this struct. I will, the first one I will call a. The name should be device a. And the integer I will set to 42. And then let me add a second entry here. This time I will call it b and this will be device b and this will be 123. And now I will pass a pointer to the A, object A and object B in here. And I have to cast the pointer to long unsigned integer. Okay, done. And later in the probe function, we will have these driver data available. I will show you how to do this just in a second. Okay, so we have named the compatible devices. Next step is to implement a probe and a remove function. So let's do so. The return value of the probe function is an integer. I will call it my probe. The first argument is a pointer to my I2C device. So, and it's a struct I2C client. I will name it client. 
And the second argument is a pointer to the entry in my MyID list. So device ID, and I will call it ID. Okay, so if we have we are probing for a device A, the pointer will point to the first entry of the list. If we have a device B, it will point to this entry here in the list. And if I want to evaluate the data, what I could do is I can declare a struct from the type my data, and I will name it data. And this will point to ID driver data. And I have to cause this from long unsigned int to struct my data pointer. Okay, and now I can just use it. So maybe let's print out something. My I screw C driver. Um, let's print out the name and data I. And with name and I, I have access to the variables I have defined in the struct here. Okay, because this is an I2C driver, let's also access the I2C bus. So the BMP2AD has an ID register, which is set to 56 hexadecimal. And I can read it out. So let's print it out. Ah. Therefore, I can use the function I2C as bus read byte data and I want to read from my client and I want to read from the internal register address D0. This is where the ID register is and to signalize probing was successful I will return 0. Okay now I need a remove function. I will call my remove and this only has a pointer to our I2C device as an argument. And here I, all I will do is I will just print out a message to the kernel's lock. So removing, moving ah, device. Okay, and that should be it. Good, we have the compatible devices. We have implemented probe and remove. Now we can pack the driver struct. So I want to add a new I2C driver. The probe function will be my probe. The remove function will be my remove. The ID tables are stored in my IDs. And let's add some additional driver data like the name, which will be I2C um, or my I2C driver. Okay, and now the last thing I have to do is I have to register the I2C driver. Therefore, I would need an init and an exit function and I would have to call I2C register driver and I2C unregister driver, or I'm using the macro module I2C driver and I'm passing the I2C driver I want to, um, I want to register and I forgot to give it a name, so I will name it my driver. And this is a driver I want to register. Okay. Yeah, and this macro will automatically create an init and an exit function for me. Okay, so that should be the source code. Let's try to compile it. And let's see how much mistakes I did. Probe my probe. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. ID. Okay, let's take a look at it. Oh, I forgot the struct. I forgot the struct. So the argument here is from the type const struct i c device id. Let's see if it's working now. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, then I will load the driver. Load it. And now I will change to root user and I will navigate to sys bus i c devices. So in here I can see all the I2C buses which are available on my system and I've connected my BMP280 to I2C bus number 1. So 76 is the address of the BMP280. So let me navigate into the I2C1 folder and in here I have the files new device and delete device. And if I write the device name and the address to this new device I can add a new device to my I2C bus. 
So let's do this. So I will write a device and 76 hexadecimal to new device. And if I take a look at the curls lock now, you can see here in the probe function, we are probing device A and the data, um, the integer variable of the data is set to 42. And here our I2C success or access also worked successfully, so we could read out the ID which is 58. Oh, I said 56 before, never mind, it's 58. Okay, if I want to remove the device, I can write just the I2C address to delete device. And if I take a look at the kernels lock, you can see we, we are calling the remove function. And now, if I'm adding the, uh, the B device with the same address, and if I take a look at the kernel slog again, you can see um, now the ID tables entry points to the second entry. So we have device P here and the data is 123 and the read access of the I2C bus still works. And you may wonder why I'm using B device and A device and not just BMP to AD. Well, there's a very simple reason for this because if I'm writing BMP to AD, and 76 to new device, it will also add a new device, but <laughs> Linux already offers a driver for the BMP280 and this will be loaded if we are writing BMP280 and the address to this new device variable. And then I should see my device here and over this I O device zero, I could read out the temperature if I'm interested. So let's do this. Okay, quite warm in here. Yeah, maybe because it's lying so close to my Raspberry Pi. I don't know, but because I don't think it's 25 degrees in my room, but never mind. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.